Okay, so the second Secret Invasion trailer is now out, and throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down the brand new look, talking about the easter eggs, hidden details, and also giving our theories on what could be happening in the show. I actually recently reread the run, and it's a far cry from the political thriller that we see in this series. Centered heavily around the Avengers, this had a monumental knock-on effect with the rest of the Marvel Universe. This happened at a point in which they were at their lowest in the aftermath of Civil War. Tony Stark was tricked into thinking he may be a Skrull, and we found out that several of the species had infiltrated the ranks of the Marvel Universe. Bloody Jarvis is one! Now in the MCU, it's coming off the back of Avengers Endgame, and it could be argued that the universe is at one of its lowest points as well. People just don't seem to be as enamoured with the MCU as they used to be, and with Marvel Studios going through a lot of drama behind the scenes, this may be the perfect time for a show like this to come along. The political thriller seems to be more in line with The Winter Soldier, and though it's a far cry from its comic book counterpart, I think this could be just what we need right now. Anyway, the first trailer opened with Nick Fury returning to Earth, which is where he was reunited with Maria Hill. If you cast your mind back to Far From Home, then you'll remember that he was off world for some time, with Talos and his wife masquerading in his and Maria's place. We discovered that he'd been avoiding Earth for years, and it's difficult to say whether that was even him at the end of Endgame. The calls have been going straight to voicemail, and Nick Fury's been ghosting everyone to make up for Spider-Man ghosting him. Who knows, this series we might even find out who Spider-Man actually is, as he's the only hero in the MCU that we don't know the secret identity of. Now Fury looks downtrodden and beaten, and it could show how long he's been off-world. Now this idea of him being called back to Earth for some serious business is of course reminiscent of why Captain Marvel had to return at the end of Infinity War. Man's even arming up his wife, who we know will be played by Charlene Woodard. He's even coming back to Earth to see her, so it must be important, like hitting the subscribe button on a channel that occasionally posts alright videos. Fury. Since you've been gone, things have gotten much worse. How do you think I came back? You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us, old friend. This is personal. Now we start the new look off very much building off the back of the previous trailer with them walking through the woods. There's a number of things that this could be to, such as a secret shield facility or one of his many hideouts. Looking at the rest of the trailer and the clothes he has on though, I think this might actually be to the tombs that we see later on. Though he also goes to one of his gravestones, it's important to point out that he's wearing a grey hat here and a slightly different coat. In both the opening shot and the one at the tomb, he, he's wearing a purple hat and this is possibly linking them both together. The trailer also ends with them walking out of that, so they might be bringing it full circle from the beginning and showing the start of that scene and then the end of it. We then get Talos saying that things have been getting much worse since he's been gone. It's actually difficult to tell how long this has been going on for, and it's possible that he might have disappeared completely after the events of Winter Soldier, and him returning to Earth here is his first time back on the planet since then. Really difficult to tell, and though it has been said that he came back for Endgame, we just don't really know. Now from here we cut to Moscow and see the Kremlin. This is then attacked by Kingsley Benadir's character, and we know that he's going to be called Gravik. Judging by how his arms change later on, it's possible that he's a super scroll, and I'm guessing that he's going to be the leader of the Resistance group. Or is he? Well, I think he's at least the face, and they could definitely put it where they prop him up as the bad guy, and then reveal that it's actually one of the characters that we've grown to trust. Either way, this is clearly the face that the scrolls have chosen to wear when they're carrying out their attacks. Due to them all being shapeshifters, it's possible that these are all different scrolls, but they want to appear as this one man, in a similar way to how a group like Anonymous all wear those V for Vendetta masks. We actually see Maria in the middle of this attack, and it's possible that this kick starts the season, and then this is why she reaches out to Nick. Sorry, Fury. I'm guessing that uh, friends call him Fury. Now I'm guessing that in this they realise it's the scrolls, and then Fury finds out about it, which is why he returns to Earth. Now Rhodey being brought back in is a big addition to the show, and for years now people have suspected that he's a scroll. It's been a big theory time, 
that people have had for, for over 10 years now. And if you go back and look at what the character looked like in the first Iron Man movie, you may notice that there's something slightly different about him. Yep, that's right, he has a moustache, but him not having one after that movie could show that he's been switched out with a scroll. The other ones we met in Captain Marvel were friendly. In the comics, they're almost always the bad guys, and they could be attempting to shift them back to being villains for the rest of the saga. Skrulls are refugees, and from what we know in the show, they will be trying to claim our planet as their own. This is why they've taken spots in lots of leadership positions, and have started to replace our people with their own. It's something they did in the comics too, and it gave them access to our technology and weapons. Now just like how Hydra had infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., we now have an alien invasion happening in the US government. There's very much a cold war going on on the planet, and in opposition to this we have MI-13. Based in the UK, this secretive entity deals with paranormal and supernatural activities. It's England's answer to S.H.I.E.L.D., and the organisation probably no fury due to him being the ex-director. The head of it will be played by Olivia Colman, and we also know that she's going to be called Sonia Falsworth. I'd love it if it was revealed that she was a Skrull as well, and this would add an extra dimension on top of everything. We already have Division in them, as we have Talos on one side, and then the Resistance sect that are trying to take over everything. Now we also know that the character actually has roots in the Marvel Universe too, and she's actually the descendant of James Montgomery Falsworth, aka Union Jack. Anyway, this will all be going down in London, which is where Fury ends up meeting up with her. We then see them travelling out to his grave, and you might notice that this is actually a different one to the one at the end of Winter Soldier. The inscription in that was a reference to Pulp Fiction, whereas this one reads, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Potentially, the real Fury is dead, and this guy is also a scrub. Now what I think this most likely is, is that this is out in England, and they may have also faked his death with MI-13. We can also see from the tomb site that he uses graves as a place to hide things out, so potentially this is a literal dead drop that has his equipment. We then cut to the indoor site, and we can see that there's a wolf emblem on it. This is lit up, showing that it's activated, whereas in the next shot when he arms up, it's powered down. Sh** easter egg, but I'm just being thorough mate. Very few of us know about the wars fought in the shadows that have raged on this planet. Do you feel responsible? Where are the Avengers? This war is one I have to fight. Alone. Wanted man on the planet. You don't know what they have planned for you. Now next we cut to characters walking through cityscapes and we hear about the secret wars fought in the shadows. We can catch Ben Mendelssohn's Talos saying something and I'm guessing that this is an exposition dump to catch us up on what's been happening since he's been away. Now Everett Ross is someone who's going to be returning as well. He's of course on the run after the events of Wakanda forever and now he's lying low after being double crossed by his ex-wife. It's always the bloody wives, uh, and Ross being revealed to be a scroll would be a big thing for the series, uh, and he is the kind of character that I imagine them to pull this kind of twist on. They need these kinds of names where it's going to be a shock, but it's not going to retroactively destroy everything, and he fits the mould pretty well. Man was married to a higher ranking US government official, and he became one himself, making him the ideal candidate to be revealed as a scroll. Now from here we get an overhead shot of a convoy, and this is following on from the same one that's later shot at by a helicopter. We know that Amelia Clark's character will be there too, and she seems to be slumped over a body. Potentially this is Talos, and it may be a big moment in the show in which he dies. Now as for Amelia Clark, there's actually a lot that's been announced since the last teaser. Disney have come out and told us exactly who she's going to be, and we now know that she's going to be playing Gear. This is a character who pulls from the comics and in that she and her fellow agent Claire lived on Earth and had a family. One of their daughters was taken by Project Blossom and there were big things that happened with them in the source material. Gia posed as Pepper Potts at one point and she's had quite a big history with the scrolls that spans back years. In the show though, this is actually going to be Talos' daughter who was first introduced at the end of Captain Marvel. We of course also met Monica Rambeau in that as well, so we've seen these two kids grow up off the back of that film. It's even possible that Gia was the scroll we met at the end of WandaVision, and this would sign with her meeting her after seeing her mother when she was younger. Also, it might be pronounced Gaia. If it is, 
Hey, sorry again. I think it. I think it's actually Gaia. And that's kind of why I think she's leaning over the body of him. And if Talos is taken out, then it means Fury's list of allies is getting smaller and smaller. Later on in the teaser, we catch him badly injured, and that sort of looks like a black vehicle behind him, potentially linking these two moments up. Now, after this shot, we see several bodies on beds, seemingly in hibernation. This is the room that Gaia came across in the first trailer, and we see a follow-on from that scene with her looking over them. My guess is that she's discovered a place that is potentially holding the world leaders who've been replaced by scrolls, and we may come across some of the characters we know here. I was thinking that the scrolls may be sucking DNA out of them to make duplicates, but scrolls can shapeshift without taking a person's bodily fluid, so I'm guessing they'd not need to do that. Sonya then asks if Fury feels responsible, and this is likely because he helped the scrolls initially on Earth, fucked off, and now they've thrown a revolution. Now, the Secret Invasion comic storyline was a major event spanning several books. In it, we picked up in the aftermath of Civil War, and Nick Fury discovered that Valentina Allegra de Fontaine was in fact one. They could do this with her in the MCU too, and it might explain her sudden turn against Everett. However, I am leaning more towards him being one over her, as we know that she's going to play a big part in the Thunderbolts. Anyway, Fury went into hiding after discovering the truth, and he ended up sending in his best agent Spider-Woman to go into S.H.I.E.L.D. and spy on things. Spider-Woman, eh? Now, she was revealed to be a Skrull herself, though, and this could potentially be taken over by Maria in the show. We know a Skrull has posed as her before, and maybe there's not even a Maria Hill, and she's just been a Skrull all along. Now, when this was going on, Tony was in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. after the events of Civil War. This is why the scrolls tried to convince him that he was in fact one, and to be fair, it almost worked. In the end, they launched their attack over the Savage Land, and also dropped one in the middle of New York. Several characters were revealed to be shapeshifters, and this included Hank Pym, Jarvis, Mockingbird, Dum Dum Duggan, and of course Spider-Woman. Though the heroes won in the end, national security was never the same, and it held major ramifications for groups refusing to come together down the line because no one knew who to trust. In the trailer, we then cut to what I believe is Paris. We see someone walking the streets, and then a paper from the Globe discussing the Battle of New York. We hear a voice asking where the Avengers are, and at this point, they are very much a fractured group. Spider-Man is back to being a friendly neighbourhood one, Iron Man is dead, and Steve Rogers is being President Joe Biden. Now we then see Gravik from behind, and he walks into a room with a giant device in the middle. Guessing that this is a sort of MacGuffin world-ending device thing that the villains have their hands on, and it's now about to go down. We later on see an abandoned power plant, and I'm guessing this could be where it's located at. This could be in Russia as well, because stereotypes. Now at one point, Gravik hits Fury when they're both standing inside of it, so this may be where a lot of things go down at. Nick Fury is very much talking about going off on his own, and we see how alone that he now is. I love this shot where he's stopped in the corridor, and you know I keep saying everyone's either a scroll or Mephisto, but this guy... They have to be scr- Mephisto- Mif This one's Mephisto- uh A guy says that the scrolls have something planned for him, and going back to the comics, they basically wanted to replace him and get access to all the security measures that he had. This would allow them to truly rule over Earth, and they'd not really have anything stopping them from taking over. Nick Fury promised them that he'd find them a place to live, but he's very much forgotten about them, and thus they've started to put things in place to take our planet for their own. Great Nick Fury. One last fight. Now in this part of the trailer we see a suitcase which has a damage control logo on it. They've of course popped up in the MC quite a lot recently, and we can tell from this that they've obtained a specimen of something. This might be scroll DNA, and potentially it could allow them to detect scrolls in advance. We then see Sonya going to torture someone, and Gravik looking out of a murky window, potentially at the abandoned factory that popped up before. Now after this we have a rooftop chase, and lots of action scenes. You also get a moment where I believe Nick's wife might be standing behind Gaia, but let me know below exactly what you think. Anyway, we close out the trailer with more action, before Fury finally walks out on his own. He's very much fighting the battles by himself, and we're gonna finally see if the man truly lives up to the legend. I'm nice like that. 
Anyway, that's the trailer. And as of my thoughts, you know, <laughs> Disney need a win right now, uh, let's be honest. Uh, and this looks like something that could in fact deliver that. Disney Plus shows are always a bit hit and miss, I think. It's mainly towards the end of the series that I think things start to fall apart. So I'm hoping that this comes with consequences, just like how Lucky did. They have a lot of potential to hit us with some gut punches here, and revealing some of our favourite characters as scrolls would be a good way to go about this. The thing about the original Secret Invasion run was that it was just packed with you constantly being like, who's a scroll? Who's a scroll? And if they can keep on top of that, then I think the series is really going to work. It is a political thriller, more in line with The Winter Soldier, and with that being one of the best MCU movies ever made, they have a lot of things that they can do here. So yeah, potential's there. Will they deliver? <laughs> Let's hope so. And yeah, next project in Phase 5, it needs to be a banger. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Are you excited? Yeah, comment below and let me know. We are in a competition right now and giving away the Superman 4K box set to 3 subscribers on the 15th of April. And all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the trailer. If you want something else to watch, you've got another video on screen right now, so definitely head over there right after this. Either way, thanks for sitting through the video. I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.